yeah there you go good morning ladies and gentlemen um welcome back again to uh, another episode of uh, pla property law alliance with myself tuma uh, from bsa law nick from S S S L R, and bruno simao from bsa law um we've got two questions um today um both conveying questions um we're going to get straight into the first one um this one is from dion and Dion is actually referred to us by Chris Abrahams, um, which is our previous um, host. So thank you, Chris. Um, it's good to know that you're still referring people to the Property Law Alliance for answers. We appreciate it. Um, so to keep this one short, um, Dion is seeking guidance on a, on a property that they both purchasing um, with um, himself and his wife, right? And Nick, basically, I'm gonna direct um, this one to Bruno, actually, yes. Bruno will be taking the first one. Um, Bruno, the question is, in short, in accordance to applicable law, can a seller use an addendum to shift the onus of covering the costs to rectify any modifications without required approvals, of course, are made by the seller to the purchaser? Sure. Um, so if I understood, so from our previous discussion before we went live, if I understood the question, um, they use an addendum, they use an addendum, or the seller rather, they use an addendum to try indemnify itself from any issues, modifications, issues, anything to the property that was made where they don't have approved building plans, and they use the addendum to do this, right? So exactly. on, on a very basic answer, yes, people are allowed to do that. So an addendum can come after the fact if people discover that there's uh, let's say it's not zoned correctly or there aren't any building plans or there's any defects to the property that the purchaser didn't know of at a certain point the parties can buy agreements say all right fine yes there were issues we only discovered it now but we'll sign the addendum saying that it's perfectly fine we're happy with them we won't come back in a couple of years time and and you know hassle you for it or, or claim against you whatever the case is right so yes it's doable but I think that the problem here, if memory serves, is they at the purchaser. The purchaser didn't know about the defects or the issues before the addendum was entered into. So it's tantamount to me as a seller coming to you, Jim, and saying, "Listen, buy my property, um, and here's the OTP." And then coming to you a little bit later and saying, oh, you know what, there's a little minor issue, but it's not much, uh, just sign this addendum saying that you indemnify me from any, any plan, uh, plan issues. But later you as a purchaser find out that it wasn't a small little issue. It wasn't, I think in your example, you said there was a shed that didn't have building plans, but it actually turns out that it's much, much bigger than that, right? Yes. And it almost feels like you lied to me, you induced me to enter into that addendum that amended the contract materially, or rather, yeah, I induced you, uh, you were the purchaser in my example, sorry, now I'm getting yes. confused. <laughs> then the seller induced you to enter into a subsequent contract where you indemnify me from any damages, but I lied to you in order to get you to enter into that, co uh, that contract. I didn't tell you the whole truth, I told you a little bit, and I convinced you. So that obviously is a no-go. You're not allowed to do that. That is material. It's misrepresentation, fraudulent misrepresentation, if it was actually done intentionally um, and it induced the person to enter into the contract where the person would have never entered into the contract under those circumstances. Uh, the better question actually is, is it possible to cancel the addendum only but continue with the sale? Because they are linked, but uh, the contract sometimes provides for things to be severable from each other. So, you know, one can even argue that the purchaser is not going to lose the property, but it's easy, very, very easy to, to, to attack that addendum. And if transfer has taken place, as an example, so if transfer is still going to take place, you've got leverage to stop transfer. If transfer has taken place, I would argue that you could probably attack that addendum only so retain the sale, attack the addendum, and hold the purchaser again liable for latent defects that it did not properly disclose to you, and basically sue them either for damages, for you know rectification of what the issue was, or a reduction of the purchase price. Uh, Nick, do you agree with me there? I, I agree with you 100%, and it, and it really does um, 
hop back to a conversation that we had previously had uh, between you and me with regards to when you're looking at properties, latent defects and, and stuff like that. Um, you know, this, this is a, a weird set of circumstances because the addendum does seem, you know, we don't have information about what else was situated within the addendum. Maybe it dealt with other material issues to the sale that have to, you know, that had to be dealt with. Addendums to, mm. to sale agreements are not, um, you know, they're, they're not irregular. Sometimes, you know, a, a bond isn't acquired or a purchase price needs to be amended or, or whatever the case is. So that's not irregular. But um, something like this, you know, it's it's that clause is, is particularly interesting because it does seem that there was some level of knowledge about these latent defects that at that stage, they they now tried to, you know, to, to indemnify themselves against those things. So we have previously talked, uh, Bruno, you and me, about how difficult it is when you are, when there is a sale and you take transfer of a property and you now find defects on a particular property and how difficult it is to demonstrate the knowledge of a seller in the circumstances for the defects that are on a particular property, okay? Because it's difficult to know, you know, what exactly the state of your roof is or, you know, yeah. if there is something that's that's in the way, that's the very nature of latent defects. But in circumstances like this, these are the cases that, that lawyers like, because now we go into, well, you know, who did those modifications? If it was the owner and they know they didn't get approval, this is something that you can definitely show. And I, and I agree with you, Bruno, in the sense that, um, you know, that that particular addendum for, for this indemnity to pitch up at that stage, um, mm. I, I wonder why. I, I just wonder why it came up at that particular stage that they wanted to do the indemnification. Sure. Is it is it conduct indicative of the fact that they, you know, they, they realized there haven't actually been some approvals done on the property? And those are the circumstances that you can indeed go to court and say to the court, look, there has been as you pointed out earlier, some level of fraudulent misrepresentation in the circumstances. Um, and, and you could perhaps set aside that, that addendum or at least particular clauses within that addendum if, if it doesn't deal with anything else material um, and, and perhaps seek, seek damages in order to get the property rectified in the circumstances. Definitely an argument. Um, again, one of, one of the more difficult arguments, but certainly uh, mm. This is this is one of those that it does seem that there's some level of evidence to, to demonstrate. Yeah. No. So, yeah. yeah. In in my mind, the only way the seller can get away with this is if he wasn't responsible for the modifications, because provided yes. that he did them, uh, then he can't hide behind. Oh, I didn't know. So building plans are building plans. You have to have them. Only way is he bought 100%. the property like that and he didn't realize and the addendum was purely actually because of that shed. Um, yes. Yeah, that's that's the only way. Uh, uh, Chuma, you were saying? Yeah, so there's actually a third party in this um, example or question and I want to bring that um, that forward and maybe you or Nick can actually answer this because there's a mention of an estate agent, right? And I think maybe this is important because in any purchase or, or property, there's always an estate agent somewhere in the middle. And there's a, it, it says that the seller and agent only referred to a tool shed that they didn't have plans for. Now, my question is, is there any responsibility on an estate agent perspective to sort of assist in the situation or to disclose anything or if they are, or that they are aware of? And going forward, should there be any liability? Is the estate agent just like, there's no sort of um, liability on his or her part. So just maybe just touch on that quickly. Mm. So Nick, I, 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 yeah, I think from my side, again, um, you know, this, when we're looking at matters like this, what we're looking at is the intention of the parties. So the agent and the owner have a, although they're acting, you know, the agent is acting in its capacity as an agent for the particular owner, the knowledge of the agent might not be that of the owner. Okay, so when Bruno said, um, you know, uh, did the owner do do the actual modifications? Were they aware of the, um, you know, the fact that these these uh, modifications hadn't actually been approved? Um, you know, the the fact that the the agent is now representing again that it's just a shed in the circumstances. Okay, um, that doesn't necessarily give us any indication of whether they knew about the other uh, modifications on the particular property. They certainly have a duty. Um, the agent certainly has a duty to to make sure that they're not misrepresenting uh, anything that's that's not correct in the circumstances. But for for the purposes of this particular agent, um, you know, the the owner certainly could be held 
or fraudulent misrepresentation by virtue of the fact that they were aware. Um, they, were, they were perhaps aware of the condition of the premises and the fact that certain things were not in place. The agent had a duty to not represent anything incorrect, but I'm not sure about where their knowledge was with respect to the property. Okay. What do you think, Bruno? Yeah. No, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, it, look, an agent can only do so much. An agent can't read the seller's mind, uh, doesn't know, doesn't, uh, will only communicate what it was told. We've had examples of cases where the sellers actually did disclose things and the agents actually held back and didn't tell the purchasers. And there was proof that the seller had handed over disclosure forms to the agent. The agent had simply not provided them to the purchaser. So that's easy. That's, you know, it's easy to say there, listen, agent, you're responsible. But I mean, the reality is it's very easy for me to tell the agent, oh, this, this is what's happening. Go get an addendum signed. And he goes because he trusts you and he say he, he represents what you had told him. If I'm lying, there's no way he's going to know because, it, I mean, it, it's not it's not up to him. It's it's not incumbent on him to go find out if there's building plans. So I would say that there, unless you see that the seller and agent start fighting with each other and start pointing the fingers, I would probably say the agent's not responsible. But if the seller suddenly starts blaming the agent saying, no, 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 I didn't say tool shit. I said everything. Then... Yeah. I would say that uh, the agent carries a level of responsibility, which is great for you because then you can claim from um, uh, like the Fidelity Fund. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, thanks, um, thanks, guys. That 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 really puts it into good perspective. Um, so a mention of um, a misrepresentation and also disclosure forms or non-disclosure forms. Um, we do have uh, um, some videos on the, um, on the PLA YouTube channel with regards to, we've discussed, I believe, um, non-disclosure forms or disclosure forms. So please go through to our channel and have a look at, at those videos as well. Um, I think that does cover the first um, question. 